Okay. There we go. Well, I was going to make a video today on uh, the maple syrup cooker and get that finished up, but would you really? Okay. But it's been raining, slating, and windy, and not windy. Really? Listen. You're killing me. So I decided to uh, make a video on my favorite axes. Now, I kind of have an affliction for axes and knives. And I could probably go broke buying them. But I restrain myself. So all these axes I'm going to show you. Five of them are yard sale finds. One of them is my brother's, and this one I bought at a hardware store. And we might as well start with this one. So this is what I call boys' axe. I bought it down at the local hardware store, and it's okay. You know, it says it's got tempered treated steel, and, and you can get an edge on it. I mean, that's. That's pretty sharp. But I absolutely hate this thing. I used it like twice, and it's just, I don't know why. I, it don't feel right, it, I don't know. I just hate it. So, but uh, it seems to me it was about a $30 one. And it, it'll split, as you can see. But it's just, it's got no history to it. I don't know. I just don't like it. So let's, let's get a couple more of the more, a couple more of the more interesting ones and mess around with them. So this is a plum, double bit, has the original handle on it, or at least the original handle to me. I have not rehung this one. The handle's still in decent shape, um, but Plum just makes a super good axe, or made a super good axe. This thing is hair splitting sharp, and it's a little big to, you know, backpack in or whatever, uh, and they're they're more dangerous because they have uh, two edges on them. So you, you really do have to be careful with them. Uh, but they're just a joy to, they're just a, a joy to use. That thing splits so easy. Oh, while well, I'm thinking about it. So Plum, Plum was started in Philadelphia, PA. A little bit of history for you. Okay, this is another plum. This is actually more of a, a cruiser axe. It's a little, it's a little shorter, not as heavy. Um, I actually should shorten the handle up on this a little bit, but it's okay for now. I rehung this one, hold it down real good. Uh, not really happy with the way the handle turned out, but it's okay. Uh, but this is another one of my favorite favorite axes to use. They split. They just split. It's so nice. Okay, this is another yard sale find, and this is a. Juni Juniata <laughs> and it's got stamped in the back here C.H. Miller Hardware Huntington PA now you can see right here I actually had to weld this because it had a little bit of a crack started which I'm not going to try and sell it anyway so I really don't care this is a 
genuine cruiser axe um, that foresters would take in with them. It would have a shorter handle on than this one. They would take in with them to blaze trees and cut brush or whatever they needed to to survey out or mark timber or whatever they had to do. Uh, this is not as heavy as a head. I'd say it's probably about oh, a pound lighter. You can see it's a little thinner and it's a little shorter, a little smaller. Uh, this one splits pretty good. It's not as heavy. have the hump behind it but this this axe is a pleasure to carry around with you yard sale fine okay so this is a a uh, M Beatty and sons and this is a Ewing axe this has the original handle on it uh, my brother actually gave it to me to rehang the handle I just haven't had time to do it right and I'm very particular about hanging handles a lot like Cody over at Wrangler Star I don't like doing it the wrong way it has to be perfect um, and I haven't had enough time to devote to it now so this is the Ewing axe and in case you didn't know what they're for what they were for, okay what they were for is you would take a round log and the handle or the head is actually offset Okay, so you take this and you go down along the log like so. You take a round log and make it square like we just did there. Beatty was actually started back in the 1700s. Um, I, I did as much research as I could on the internet. Uh, I'm guessing by the sounds of things, that axe was made mid to late 1700s. So that's pretty cool. And he found it in the wall of his house when he was remodeling. So it had been there for a very long time. This is a Collins. Collins was uh, it originally started in Connecticut. Let me look at my cheat sheet here. Yeah, Collins came from Connecticut. Uh, Juniata, the Juniata axe was actually started in Axeman, which from where I'm standing as the crow flies is about a mile from here. Um, Plum was started in Philadelphia. The M. Beatty, that uh, offset axe, was actually, they started out in Waterville, PA. And this is a Collins. And the next one I'm going to show you is a Norland. Norland was started in Lewistown, PA. So this is a Collins. This is again what I would call, let me back up here. This is again what I would call boy's axe. Um, it's about 30 inches, top to the bottom of the handle. If I had to carry an axe all day, this would be it. Hunting, camping, fishing, whatever. They're big enough that you can split wood with them. You can clear brush. You can chop down limbs. Uh, you could even actually quarter up an animal or uh, skin an animal with this. They, these things hold. A tremendous edge and are just a joy to have around. They split pretty good. So, another yard sale find. Okay, well, this is my pride and joy here. I dropped it. I dropped it in the mud. You have to forgive me. This is a Norland. Uh, this is what they, what I'm referring to, 
as a Hudson Bay edition. Uh, same thing, it's about 30, 30 inches top to bottom. And this, is, I, I absolutely love this thing. I actually bought a toolbox or a tackle box from a lady at a yard sale that had a bunch of crap in it, drill bits, all kinds of just this and that kind of stuff. And this was laying in the bottom of it. Um, it was red. Uh, but I don't like putting paint on them because they stick in the wood too much. So I stripped it all off. And as you can see, it's, it's well used. I rehung it. Uh, the handle started to split on me a little bit. But I'm not too worried about it. Whenever it, uh, whenever it gets worse, I'll rehang it. But other than that, this, this axe, it, it just feels good. It's got enough heft to it. It's got a good hammer on the back for pounding in tent stakes or whatever you need to do with it. Uh, it's not too big that it's uncomfortable to carry. You could easily put this thing in a backpack. You wouldn't even know it was there. Uh, but this is this is my pride and joy. There you go. I mean, you just you just can't go wrong with it. Hey, you guys behave. Uh, that's it for today. I'm going to go and uh, take a little break and take care of some other stuff. But thanks for joining me. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment if you would please. Um, doing my best here to grow this channel and comments and subscriptions uh, help as much as views. So I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, um, which next time I'm hoping to... Uh, be able to show you guys the uh, syrup cooker and how it turned out and what I do to uh, cook off my sap and how I finish it. I have enough sap right now that I could start it but as you can hear and probably see and now it's starting to rain again so I gotta get this thing wrapped up and uh, get back inside. So thanks again for joining us and We'll see you on the next episode.